In this session, we'll be taking you through three short demos that will help you when working with Google Cloud's serverless technologies. We'll be showing you how to use build packs to build containers, how to use cloud code to deploy cloud run services, and how to use Visual Studio code to debug cloud functions. Hi, I'm Katie, and in the next few minutes, you'll see that building containers isn't that scary. When working with serverless, you have to work with a packaging concept known as a container image. Container images, or just containers, are just that. They contain all the elements required to run an application. They allow an app to run in isolation and for many apps on the same infrastructure to run without interfering with each other. There are multiple ways that you can make these containers. The most popular way is to write a list of instructions in a Docker file that are used to build your image. You start from a base image, you copy files from your local file system into the image, you then run commands such as installing dependencies, and you then define an entry point, a command that is run when you start your container. This is a very common template for Docker files, so much so that there are now automation tools that presume this format. With build packs, you don't have to write a Docker file. Google Cloud Build Packs are built on top Build Pack standard, automatically detecting which programming language you're using and running the steps common for that language and make a container ready to be used across many Google Cloud products. In fact, most Cloud functions deployed in the last year have been using Build Packs behind the scenes with help from the Functions Framework. Sarah will be discussing more about Cloud Functions later in this demo. Let me give you an example of the power of Build Packs. When developing a JavaScript app on your computer, you would install Node, write your app, and create a package.json file where you define your dependencies and your star command. You would then install the dependencies that you've defined, and then you would run the start command you've defined, which will start your web app. If you were to write a Docker file, you would do the same thing. You'd start with a Node base image, which has Node already installed for you. You then copy your files, then install your dependencies, and when the container is invoked, run your web server. Build packs do the same thing when they detect a Node app. It will detect that you need the Node runtime and set that up for you, copy your files into the image, install your dependencies, and then set the entry point to run when your container is started. However, for some programming languages, there may not be one way to do things. For example, when developing in Python, installing dependencies is very standard, but how to start your web server is not. BuildPack doesn't know what to do in this situation and will return an error if you try to build your container without defining your entry point. In this case, BuildPack needs one added file, a proc file or process file, that defines what you want the web process to be. Adding this file to your code base tells BuildPacks what you want to run to start your web server. It's picked up by the build process and will be run when you start your container. No matter the language you use, you can set your own proc file. For instance, the Java build pack doesn't require a proc file, but you can still define one. Defining a proc file will override the default command run to start your container. You can also override other default functionality with environment variables. Take a look at the documentation over on GitHub for more information. After installing the pack command tool, you can build your own containers on your local machine if you have Docker installed, or you can submit the build to Google Cloud Build, which will run pack for you, making your containers available in the Google Container Registry. Build packs are available for JavaScript, Python, Java, .NET, and Go. You can read more about this on our blog and try out some sample applications over on GitHub. But as for deploying your containers, let me hand you over to Abby. What Katie just showed with build packs was awesome, but what's next? Hi, I'm Abby, and I'm going to show how one dev tool makes containerizing and deploying your app to Cloud Run, one of Google Cloud Servo's offerings, easy. But first, what is Cloud Run? Where am I deploying to? Cloud Run is a fully managed serverless container-based platform. It lets you deploy stateless HTTP containers. Deploying Cloud Run services is super fast, and I'll show you my demo in a bit. You also get the flexibility of configuring your own custom domains. 
Cloud Run supports custom binaries, so any language or library is fair game. And because it's container-based, Cloud Run services are portable. But one of the biggest appeals of Cloud Run is its ability to scale down to zero when no traffic is hitting your service. CloudCo can help you out on your serverless journey right from your IDE. CloudCode is an IDE plugin that automates development workflows for cloud-based applications written in Python, Go, Java, Node.js, and c -sharp. If you develop with VS Code or one of these JetBrains IDEs, CloudCode can help you out. CloudCode supports a number of development flows for Cloud Run. First, it helps you ramp up fast with integrated samples. When it comes to building and deploying container images, CloudCode merges the two steps into just a couple clicks. And regarding debugging, CloudCode lets you debug your service in a local, emulated, production-like environment. CloudCode also has a feature where, after hitting save, your code is automatically built and deployed again, speeding up your inner dev loop. And finally, you can manage your Cloud Run services right from your IDE. That's a quick look at Cloud Run and Cloud Code, but how about a demo? With Cloud Code, I'll create a starter Cloud Run service, run it locally on the Cloud Run emulator, and finally, deploy it to Cloud Run, all from my IDE. So I'm using VS Code for this demo. I already have the Cloud Code extension installed from the VS Code marketplace. You can tell because I have this stack of four icons seen to the left and a Cloud Code button down here. I'll create a new project using one of Cloud Code's integrated samples. First, I'll hit the Cloud Code button. Then select a new application. And then Cloud Run application. Cloud Code has samples for the supported languages I mentioned. For this demo, I'll create a Node.js Hello World service. I now have a Node.js Cloud Run service that's ready to be deployed. Before deploying to Cloud Run, I want to make sure everything works locally first, though. To do that, I'll build and deploy locally to Cloud Code's Cloud Run emulator. It emulates production so there aren't any surprises once I actually do deploy to production. I'll hit the Cloud Code button again and select Run on Cloud Run Emulator. Now I'll configure my local deployment. For my builder, I'll switch from Docker to build packs so that I don't have to worry about a Docker file. Under Advanced Service Settings, I can set container properties like CPU allocation, environment variables, and connect to Cloud SQL databases. Looks good. Now I'll hit Run. Cloud Code is now handling all the commands for building and deploying to the emulator. Once that's done, I can open this link, and there it is my Node.js service built with build packs running locally in my emulator. Since everything is looking great, I'll skip debugging things and jump right to deploying this service to Cloud Run. I will hit the Cloud Code button one more time and select Deploy to Cloud Run. This all looks very similar to deploying to the local emulator. Since I'm creating a new service, I'll leave this box alone. My deployment platform will be Cloud Run, and I'll once again switch my builder to build packs. And then I'll hit deploy. I'll click the link to my deployed service. And this is my Node.js service deployed to Cloud Run. Now anyone can access it. That was a look at how Cloud Code makes building containers with build packs and deploying to Cloud Run easy. Join the Cloud Code channel on the Google Cloud Platform community Slack to stay up to date on announcements and ask questions. Now I'll hand it off to Sarah, who's going to cover local debugging of Cloud Functions. Thanks, Abby, for showing us how you can use Cloud Run within Visual Studio Code. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm going to be your guide to another serverless compute offering called Cloud Functions. Cloud Functions allows you to run small snippets of code in an event-driven way. So let's see Cloud Functions in action. Suppose you have previously deployed a Cloud Function that receives data from an IoT sensor that reports about whether the temperature is too hot or it's OK. And let's say that you want to verify your function is working properly in production. You can use Visual Studio Code in the terminal window to send curl commands. So here, uh, we can send a curl command 
to verify whether the temperature is too hot. And your choice if this is Celsius or Fahrenheit. And here, when we send this command, we see that it reports back too hot. We could also test the OK condition, and we see it comes back OK. But what if you forget to send a payload? Notice that it also says too hot. You have found a bug. Now, you want to fix and verify this locally before you push to production. And to do that, you can use the functions framework. So the functions framework is an open source functions as a service framework written by the Google Cloud Functions team. And the functions framework is available in Go, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, and .NET. And here you can see that it's been successfully uh, installed. And we can also use Visual Studio Code's built-in debugging tools for Node to debug our Cloud Function. Because we're in the debugging session, we want to hit Continue to allow the function to just finish gracefully. And now we can go to the first terminal window and stop serving the function. Let's say that the specification says, in the unlikely event that a payload is not sent, we want to throw an exception. So I'll add the code now to throw the exception, and let's test this. But this time, I am not going to use the inspect flag. So this will not start a debugging session. And you notice that Visual Studio stays in uh, the blue status bar and let's invoke it, the function, and we see the correct behavior. The exception is thrown and is also locked. Now you are ready to deploy your function to production. If you would like to learn more about how to do this demo yourself, you can check out the corresponding code lab for this talk. Thank you for attending our session. You saw how to use build packs to build containers, how to use cloud code to deploy cloud run services, and how to use Visual Studio Code to debug cloud functions. If you want to learn more, you can visit our GitHub repo for build packs. Check out the cloud code channel in the Google Cloud Platform Community Slack and follow along debugging cloud functions in our code lab. Thank you for attending this session and have a great Google I.O.